are with The Fellowship of Cybertron, Season 2, Episode 11, The Path of Logic, Part 5, a thrilling conclusion, I hope. We are in March 2020, I am Devin, I am playing the Horizon Framework Playbook, and to my left we have X Plane Y. I'm Tyler, I'm playing Amble, the Lantern. I'm Peter, a fighter of North Space, the Avatar. Uh, I am Mark, I am playing Giacomo, the half one. Alright, so, give us a recap, gang. Ah, what happened last time? Uh, so we finished building our Shatter Dome and we went monster hunting. Yes, and some people were also monster hunting with satellites. Yep, and they tried to shoot our monster once we, uh... Took it down, but I uh, knocked that out of the park. Like an anime protagonist, <laughs> you know, playing baseball. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and then what? We are. So we we used that monster to um, confirm our suspicions. Well, I mean, first of all, like it was apparent right away that the virus was jumping species because everybody started getting infected. It came out that um, the jellyfish people were infected, the barons were infected just everybody but we were able to take that monster from perfectly healthy to terminal and from that we were able to get uh, the cure basically we have a cure well it will be done in like a few weeks so at least one more week we'll get the thing so you know millions more people will die but that's a cost of progress what are we at for uh, I haven't looked at the uh, 170,000 dead so far, and like over 340,000 infected. Okay. Yikes. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll have to start the new day. Woo. So, uh, yeah, what, what day are we on now? Day 21? Yep. Yeah, okay, we also figured out that Cyber... Oh no, wait, we, we were skipping time because the Thunderjaw experiment's done. Yeah, that's that's what we have to do. Yeah. Also, we found out that the Sebi Plex had to infect the machinery around here. So, yay, tech! Yeah, the reactor went critical. Yeah. A reactor went critical and uh, caused a lot of damage. Okay, so, so I guess that it went critical because of the virus. Yes. So we'll save my character while you guys were doing that was like helping deal with that nonsense, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna let you guys get all the way up to day thir twenty nine. I thought it was happened. Policies and stuff kicking. Well, it's gonna be a nightmare. That's what's gonna happen for the next couple of days. Because you, you guys aren't doing anything. It's not just cooking in the background. You're actively working on this shit. Yeah. Like you're doing stuff day to day. So days start passing from where we left off at the 20th or the 21st until we get to the 29th. Uh, total infected 98 million. <laughs> Dead today, 12,487,231. 12 million. Oh, 12 million. Sorry. <laughs> Total dead, 22 million and a lot as the number keeps ticking up faster and faster. <laughs> the planet is looking at total death in the next eight days. It's everyone on the world. Well... <laughs> It was a good run, guys. It was a good run. <laughs> but yes, at the end of that, through all the, the kind of rioting and, and society starting to break down kind of a lot, uh, there's open rebellion, people are flipping cars, you know, drones are being shot out of the sky. It's, it's gotten heat heated. Ships from the Barrens are trying to take off and uh, are being shot down. Uh, reminds me of Cybertron in the good days. <laughs> You have a very funny memory of the good days. It reminds me of Cybertron when Megatron took over. Which one? What time? Which which Megatron? Which the time? most recent one. The one that declared that nobody leaves Cybertron. He gave everyone a chance to leave and they didn't, so when they tried to leave he shot them out of the sky because no one leaves without his permission. It's his world now. I think that's Death Charge now. Oh yeah, no, they're shooting down ships. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, when really, yeah, here at the end of the timeline, you're able to finally get quarantine and vaccination policies in place. You've locked down what the disease is, where it spreads from, and how to cure it, and you have a cure and a vaccine set up, and now you're able to mass produce and distribute it. 
So, yeah. That, that's starting to be put into play, but the world is... Uh, right now, it's pretty fractured. The systems you have are in play. They are going to start slowing this down and hitting us at the at ahead. Uh, do you have any ideas for how to, like... I don't know, course correct? Absolutely. Now that you have time... <clears throat> we don't have time, Devin. <laughs> time is the one thing we don't have. Well, you had to spend time making this shit. I know. <clears throat> what this planet needs is a leader. Someone can rally around. Someone that the people in these trying times will flock to and listen to. Someone with the logistics networks already in place to distribute the cure. And we only know one class of people who travel about the world that have roots and paths that can move this from place to place quickly and effectively. We just need to prop one of them up and have the rest flock to him. Or her. I don't care. It's how the agenda those things. Is it? <laughs> for us it is. <laughs> no, it isn't. That was a joke, Devon, for a while. For but what? For gendering, you know, the organics. Oh. You guys have gender. Yes, we yeah, have gender. They have yeah. Cytronian gender. Which is identical to most genders. Yes, but Although it was more more rigid back in the good old days when <laughs> men were tractors and <laughs> Women were submersible wee, wee, vehicles. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> Women were nurses. My nurses. Uh. Not like RC, who went from being... I don't know what RC started as, but she is a straight-up psycho killer now. People don't like A on her bad side. They say she drinks people's blood. They're probably getting her mixed up with that. Uh, black, arac air, black arachnia or arachnid? Yeah, I don't know which one it is, but whichever one it is, they praise on the young one. That's that's arachnid, and we don't talk about how she collects young specimens from other aliens. Yeah, it's, it's, creepy. it's super creepy. And for context, in Transformers Prime, there's a Black Widow called Arachnid, who's a helicopter spider lady. <laughs> and in Transformers Prime, she's just kind of a murderer. You know, normal stuff for kids. In the Japanese dub, she has a thing for collecting young members of species. Even in, in her harem. Even in Transformers Prime, like the English version, straight up, like young, it, it is young, not like, straight year old up. Jack was like, "Oh God, I need, I need an adult." <laughs> yeah, she, she was just yeah. a murderer. She wasn't, she wasn't quite collecting children. <laughs> All right, let's just yeah. stick with Black Arachnid. Some problems. <laughs> let's just stick with Black Arachnid, who's just evil and it's fine. <laughs> she wasn't even that evil. She was just kind of a dick. You shot me. Because I'm evil. Right? She was just kind of a dick. <laughs> so, who are you suggesting, Amble? I don't know. I can't <laughs> tell these guys apart. You just find the least objectable one and. I mean, we have a couple. to work. We got a couple experts on the, uh, on the, on the attack. I, I guess I've been dealing primarily with these uh, workers. With the workers. So, so are there the laborers, any... the barons, the oracles? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's no secret. I think we all identify that the laborers have the best claim to actually have a reasonable government going on. Yeah, I was trying to make it both sides, where it's like, oh, the oracles are really interesting for Peter's characters, and like the barons are really interesting for Ian's character. That Ian didn't show up for two sessions, <laughs> and it got away from me really fast. Yeah, I mean, it's not that there's the laborers are any... supposed to kind of give you guys a lot of problems because you're aliens and they hate aliens a lot, but it just. It got away from me. The wisdom of Tom Tom helped. <laughs> See, if we didn't know, you know, which part of the history was actually true, or, you know... You the, don't! Eh, we can assume <laughs> it's one way or the other. You We've guys made don't know. Mind. We know. You guys <laughs> literally do not, like, yes, I love that. I love that delivery. But you guys cannot know which one is true, because I never wrote it down. I just <laughs> fed you a bunch of stories and hoped you'd figure it out by what made the most sense, because I don't know what made the most sense. Also, like, like we literally wrote it up as being, like, I think if if we had, you know, someone here playing the hair, the other one, you're right, it would be, there'd be some options on that one. But on the other hand, we have a, we have one character who's, whose book is The Disaffected, the people who don't want to have anything to yeah. do with their kind of that. See? The Doctor and the Angel, who I'm not quite sure. I think your character is just going with the, the morally like least objectionable of the... <laughs> the path of least atrocity. <laughs> All angels follow it. 
They don't want to do good. They just want to do the least amount of atrocity and just kind of fall like a marble through a bunch of like pegs on a peg. Like if someone's a liar or an old bracket, that's the worst thing they can be. <laughs> Punish them. <laughs> that's a line from Transformers that comes up. Uh, Megatron steals the Forge of Souls Prime, a hammer that can create anything from anything, and specifically deny Optimus from having it, because Optimus can use it as a prime. Uh -huh. And uh, Ratchet's like, ah, the Forge is useless in his hands, only a prime can wield it. And one of the younger characters is like, what if Megatron just gets like the severed arm of a prime and s stitches it to his arm, then he can wield it. And Ratchet's like, oh, Megatron's a lot of things, but he's no ghoul. The next scene is him breaking into the tomb of a prime, sawing off their arm, sawing off his arm, attaching the arm, and then using the hammer to start making shit. The next scene... Jump cut. That is what is known as a Gilligan cut. Yeah. It's astounding. Because Ratchet's like, Megatron's a lot of things, but he's no ghoul. No, no, no. No, no, no. So we've reached the verdict. If you're an Oathbreaker or a liar, it's the worst thing possible. <laughs> and it's like, well, Megatron doesn't lie, and then it cuts to him lying all the time. Uh, and Death Charge deceived us. Oh, yes. shit, all the time. <laughs> Never stopped. And that's why we need to punish him, not for anything else. <laughs> he but lied. Yeah, you think see, he I, swore. I mean, I gave, I gave, I gave Death Charge a, a fair amount of leeway on that. You know, him being uh, beating the heck out of, uh, of Decepticons, a goal I can get behind. But, uh, yeah, he's gone too far, and he needs to be taken down pretty definitively. Kind of gives a bad name to Autobots all around. <clears throat> so you know these workers. Put out, your, put out your feelers, find out the most humanitarian, nice, selfless, decent one of them who's been working amongst the various people, and we'll do our thing. I mean, yeah, I'll probably get, like, a, count, like a council going, because, uh... It seems like a good move. I'm thinking, uh... A workers union. <laughs> <laughs> Take tall. Tyler's pantomiming, <laughs> tapping his watch. It's like, no, 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 no. We need one great leader, one dictator. Yeah. Like, dictate I'm, the course of action. I'm hoping we'll have a name by lunch. Yeah, don't, I'll, get you, I'll get you something going. Here. If we don't, we'll just take one off the street, put a crown on his head, <laughs> and there. Problem solved. That's a good idea. I mean, so, it's totally random. That's that's no, 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 not the random part. The crown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about the crown? Okay, so these people, their whole planet, they got into this mess because they're trying to join the Star League. Oh no, you hate the Barons. Want to join you, the Star? You hate you hate Lion. I I forgot. Well, no, abandon this idea. <laughs> I mean, do humor. Hey, I've never I've never had any problem with Lion, except you. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm thinking, what makes a normal person into a figurehead? A symbol. Yes. So we, as Cybertronians and members of the Star League, bestow some symbol upon this person, showing them that as members of the Star League, we favor them, and that'll help... That'll help people rally behind them. What if we made the official, uh, uh, rep the, uh, made these people officially members of, the, of, uh, members of Cybertron? Then they'd be actual members of the Star League. Is there some sort of legal precedent for that? Some sort of bullshit, uh, technically legal, true way to do that? You make them a protectorate of, of Cybertron. That's, that's different. That's called Don't a, do that. I don't it's a good idea, but don't do it. I think it's called Vassalage, and... Yeah, that means you're conquering this world in the name of Cybertron. The Star League's like, well, everyone gets one. <laughs> Huh. Well, I guess this is the Cybertronian outpost. Would you like us to kill everything on the surface and terraform it for you? <laughs> well, we could bestow a me a matrix of leadership. We can't do that second thing. We can do the first. No, thing. what I was yeah, what I was thinking was the um, uh, make it the first thing. Say uh, basically and say give give the thing in charge of a, of a council. But yeah, I'm gonna try and get some people to get it. Good. We'll get some. <laughs> all right, because my character doesn't quite believe in this one voice overall, unless you opt for for governing a planet. Well, we can come back in a few hundred years and see how it shakes out. <laughs> uh, basically, I'm going to try and get a council meeting, and we're going to get... Uh... What if we made a matrix of leadership that has oh, a like, God, ten yes. year you know, timer on it, that it explodes and kills the person that's wearing it, and then there'll be no more <laughs> matrix of leadership, which means that people will take over, 
and then we'll be, we'll be ending the picture. These are, are carbon-based. <laughs> these are carbon-based life forms. The carbon-based. A small bomb. Like, how about this? Uh, let me let me <laughs> you, go, you go figure this out. We'll hash out the details of the crown thing. <laughs> okay, yeah. The, this ought to be funny. Crown of Thorns. So, okay, so my character is going to go and get a few people together. First off, we have the doctor who basically cured this disease. Yeah. Uh, I want to get her. I want to get the head of the, the uh, rebels or whatever. I mean, the, the, there was there was a, there was one person we talked to who was like. Uh, there are a lot of people in charge of a lot of things. It's not really centralized like that. Very early on, we encountered someone who was uh, a, a kind of like resistance, like a respected leader. We went out to the factory. There was like someone who was like a union leader. Sure. Um, I'll basically say, look, find someone who represents uh, two people who represent the workers. One person will have the doctor to do that. Um, I'm gonna get the Titan Hunter. No, yeah, she was a Baron. I know. Mm. They're not. We're not gonna kick them off the planet. They gotta have some sort of leader. They're not leaving the planet. Who would work the camps? <laughs> I mean, you know, the I ethnic will paint the walls. <laughs> the ethnic class will come afterwards. You know, we'll have a council, and then we'll we'll put uh, and then basically. Uh, so I'm gonna get them together. I'm gonna say, look. We don't want to rule, you know, like, we want, we, this planet needs to get its stuff organized. Why don't we create a, an interim council? You guys can work this out once we're done leaving, but we need to solve it. We need to get this stuff done. I've tried to get a, a police force going on the smashed area where the old one was. Okay. This is actually, I, I did sure. say I was going to do this, and we didn't really have time, time, time to run it. And mm -hmm. we're going to try and, I'll get whoever's running that as another person in charge of the judiciary, judiciary and I'm going to ask them, so, you know, if, get these people together and ask, do they think they can present this to the uh, rest of the laborers uh, as a as a viable thing? One person who's a who's a baron, except it's not actually a baron, and someone who actually fought the Titans, so they kind of have a better run for it. Um, Maybe one member as a non-voting voting member from. Give me a speak softly. Okay. Do you have that power? You can speak softly to like a huge crowd. <laughs> Uh, no, that's, 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 that's that. Yeah. Where you, like, sway a whole crowd of people into being galvanized by your, your words? <clears throat> He'll speak nonsense. That's the difference. Yeah. He speaks like a politician. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I've, I've got so much coming up with lies. <laughs> I, it, my chances are so much better. But, uh... Yeah, it's like, look, we got this thing, yeah, we got this, this disease pretty much, uh, pretty much linked, but... <laughs> There's like burning <laughs> bodies, but we gotta keep <laughs> the leg <laughs> wagons. Uh, but but in the, but things are still gonna get worse before they get better, and we need we need to keep we need to keep uh, keep this thing running. And the Barons are pretty well. Let's let's face it, they're pretty pretty effing useless. They've kind of closed off the doors. So I'm thinking I get a few people. We uh, uh, bring bring out the shuttles. We bring out uh, some some laborers. Uh, we get some of the Titan hunters, and we. we Form this government. What will you do about the barons who don't want to stop being in charge? Well, how about with the, hands uh, on buttons? With hands on buttons? Or over buttons? Well, I got a simple uh, solution. Either we, we can either you can include one of them, uh, or uh, alternatively, uh, while we're here, we can say something to the effect of, "Oh, I don't know." Let me go deal with that, actually. I think I'll take care of it. You're going to take care <laughs> of the Iraq-Iran missile crisis? Yeah. All because right, Superman, the quest for peace. <laughs> yeah, except we're gonna, I'm going to do it the stupid way. Oh, you're going to do it the stupid way. Collecting <laughs> all the world's nuclear weapons and hucking them into the sun wasn't the stupid way. No, my stupid way is going to be, hey, uh, Barons, we okay. got this, uh, this, this deal going. I'm going to give you some options. Uh, you... You can either learn to live with the workers, uh, work with the workers relatively running things, and keep keep in your little enclave, or you can say, no, we're gonna try and be no. You can leave, no problem. We'll even help you take you to the next system once we deal with this whole disease thing. Or you can decide you don't want to be a part of this new thing with the with the plague, and we can remove the, remove the existence with a giant ship, you know, with the jump with the with the death waves. That is totally a thing we can do. I, I'm bullshitting, of course. There's no way I could convince the, uh... What, the ship? To kill everyone? Well, no, I, I mean... <laughs> I mean, you have your guy on the, you know, gun button. I mean, I he's been gunning people down. 
Relentlessly. Murder? Mega Blaster. Night Blaster? Mega Blaster. Mega Blaster? It's like Mega Blaster. Kill everyone. And he starts and shooting you. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm going to do to burn to get advantage on this roll? I'm going to tell Mega Blaster to burn in ammo. And I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to basically uh, uh, fire for effect. Uh, so, like, the right. ridiculous, absurd power of the A track will be on display yeah, for, it's, like... It's, it's a gunboat. It's like... It is certainly a gunboat. So, like, just, just so you're thinking... Now, I'd like you to... Not that we're saying we're going to destroy your thing, but, uh, but in case you were deciding to... Uh, but trust me, right now, the people in orbit, they are not co- going to come into low orbit to, to, to defend this planet, given, given, uh, given the, the plague that's going on and how bad it is. All right, roll. Speak softly. And I'll use courage for this because I'm full of nonsense because it is a bluff. Uh, that is an 11. Okay, you essentially are going to get what you want. Like if I have more time to kind of think this out, I make a set piece or something where you're like Jimmy and bits of it. Fine. 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 All right. You convince the barons and the laborers that you've collected together that they should be the new people in charge of this planet. You convince the barons who are like, well, we'll just go into mutually assured destruction if you try to take our shit away. And then there's like a bunch of like... If you so much as look at my pile of money, I will go over to the baby ICU unit in the hospital and smash it with my horse hooves. (laughs) And then then you threaten to kill everyone with your ship in order. Yeah, and then also there's like a bunch of uh, fire, like meanwhile on the planet, you know, if I lowered the firing angle by 10 degrees... It would solve a lot of problems. Just fucking shoot the atmosphere off. <laughs> I hope you play that on speakerphone. <laughs> oh, it was totally, it totally went through on speakerphone. That was a Hallmark moment. All right, so lunchtime rolls around when Jack up rolls back on in. You have a proto council of people to take over this planet. Okay. Are you guys gonna do anything with the laborers being like a member world people? Uh, I mean, remember you had that option to make the declare a vote of no confidence. Yeah, and because because you have the whole political power backing you. I guess we could finish up with that. Say that you know, hey, the Baron isn't ruling anymore. These guys rule this thing now, and get out this world because obviously you're messing everything up. Yeah. Okay. Mess it delivered. So scene swipe to the oracles. Mm-hmm. All right, you're there at Oracle Tower. And what is, uh, how, how are you opening this dialogue? Situations change, jellyfish. <laughs> race. <laughs> I see race was the option you picked from the dialogue wheel. Like in Mass Effect, it was you all like, how are you race? <laughs> uh, what are Solarians? Race. So in other words, the renegade option. Yeah. Yeah. Renegade shit. Yeah. Uh, the people who brought you here, who you've been dealing with, are no longer the official recognized uh, ruling council on this planet, so by the official orders of Star League, you are forced to vacate. Who is sponsoring this species? And what is this species? Well, once you leave and establish formal recognitions as dictated by the regulations of Star League, you can find that out. I'm, I'm sorry, but species. bureaucracy has tied my hands. We all have to follow protocol. <laughs> Who is this species? <laughs> Are you the laborers? Oh, okay. Do you give them a profile on the laborers? Sure. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. We had suspicions there was another sapient race on this world. Suspicions. <laughs> yeah, nothing. <laughs> oh, look on Nicole's face! <laughs> in that state. <laughs> Remember, only one species can be in charge, and therefore, if you're not in charge, you cannot be a ruling race, which means you can't be a sapient species, which means, like, they're all tied up in their bureaucracy religion. Fucking Lord. There is no maybe, Nicole, only yes or no. <laughs> Very good. Who is sponsoring the species from the Star League? Sponsoring how? Who is electing them as the ruling um, member of the that species would be of the this world? Right? The Cybertronians. They, like, go through their little computer Rolodex. It's like, Cybertron. Yes, this is all in order. We accept your vote. There is none opposing. Good. <laughs> and they just kind of sit there because they can't leave this world. Yeah. 
delegate their guns in orbit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, let you know when you have the clearance to take off. Thank you very much for your day. Well, that so, was easy. Uh, I would that have... just worked? Yeah. They're a le- member of the Star League. They could literally just vote the laborers to be the ruling species of the the whole time. Oh, yeah. my God. Yes. Peter found this out like four episodes ago. <laughs> yeah, the only problem was, one, it didn't matter because plague, and two, it didn't matter because you had a bunch of guys with nukes and armored bunkers who were... I mean, they're still the there. Structure. They haven't gone away. That's, that, that, that is not a resolved problem. It is a <laughs> problem so we, much... we kicked that can right, right down the road. <laughs> we kicked that can right down the road. That's, that's, a, that's season three problem. We'll come back later and see how that turned out. If you so much as look at my money. We get back, there's been like a nuclear war, and like there's these these giant dungeons that people send the laborers in to <laughs> gather up tech. Like, oh, it's the Dungeons and Dragons world. Oh, yeah, right. Welcome, old dwellers. That was going to be an episode too. You would have gone to the D&D cartoon world with like Venger oh, and Dungeon Master. <laughs> and he would have needed help with you like putting his look son's out, ghost to rest. That was the plot of. D- the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon, by the way. You know Venture, the villain, the Skeletor guy? Yeah. He was Dungeon Master's son, who died and came back a pissed off ghost. So Dungeon Master was trying to put him to rest the whole time. Like, there's a whole plot in the background of the show about it. Like, they do a whole episode where you find out about Dungeon Master's past and who's had family and a son who died tragically. And the statue looks like Venture. And then in the final finale, it's revealed that they all, uh, because of the substandard ride construction, they all plummeted and had concuss- identical concussions, and it was all just a combat. Did they do that? Condition. Did they actually do that for the cartoon? What, the, the ride, the going into yeah, the yeah, ride? Yeah, like, like at the end of the show, did they actually reveal it was all a dream? No, fuck no. They never... <laughs> they never that show didn't have an ending. They, they ran out of money. <laughs> yeah. You think a Saturday morning cartoon had a definitive ending? I mean... One Saturday morning cartoon that had fan of ending. <laughs> I'd kill Optimus Prime. Also, Could we continue? <laughs> not a cartoon, but the dinosaurs had a definitive ending. The dinosaurs had a definitive fucking ending. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <clears throat> so it's great that we've got the uh, government propped up, but now we've got to get to the nitty gritty. Like, we actually have to distribute this vaccine. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh, well, let's take out the needle guns and start shooting. <laughs> we'll go on a safari. <laughs> let's hunt well, we got the, we got the Marcus finally. Council. We still have the... Uh, we still have a fair amount of... Uh, a fair amount of uh, pull with them. I'm sure that what's left of uh, the sort of little interim government we've been setting for the past three weeks will be very interested in distributing this stuff. <clears throat> The government that we've set up will be very interested in distributing this because it is the key to their power. It is the cornerstone of it. In addition to, I'm sure, their obvious humanitarian bent. Um, uh, but there will also be other people who will be interested in taking this vaccine, uh, potentially even destroying this vaccine uh, out of spite or hate. <sighs> you know what reminds <laughs> I was about to say, you know, like, I can't imagine Cybertronians with that, and then I remembered who, uh, exactly what caused this, this plague in the first place, so, uh, yeah. I mean, why does every species have to be like this? I mean, to be fair... Yes? I just sort of look around, like, 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 you know, it, it's not like we're not like that either. Oh. It all has happened before, and it all happened again. Man, that whole threatening the globe, the planet, uh, uh, an entire group of people with annihilation. I, I can sure see why Me- uh, why Megs is uh, so uh, uh, relies on it so much. It is kind of uh, it is kind of kind of addictive. Well, we only started with that argument. Only I could fly. <laughs> As I said, ascending. <laughs> oh well, we should probably go uh, get to distribute uh, just distributing this stuff. Yeah. All right, so ideas for distributing the vaccine uh, cure. Well, Take what? some food, put the vaccine in it, toss it so that the animals are eating it, and so do we have? Um, well, I mean, uh, we got a couple options. We could, uh, you know, when when your best tool is a gun, uh, could we arrange solar probes or missiles to uh, uh, like 
blanket the planet in like an aerosol. Yeah. I mean, nothing's stopping you from shooting the planet a bunch of times with your guns. <laughs> I wasn't thinking with like like you know an actual like nuclear weapons or the equivalent, but I mean like you know using that as a delivery system to so just get all the vaccines in one place, shoot it up so it goes into the atmosphere, and blankets the world for you know, ten thousand years. Just like in uh, just like in that totally viable science fiction, uh, sci uh, not not like nonsense Moonraker. Bunch of like satellites that distribute uh, a nerve gas. I mean a vaccine. <laughs> so you're just gonna you're just gonna deliver this the manual way. I mean, uh, can you guys think of another one? I mean, I mean, assuming that it's viable to be delivered as an aerosol mist, that seems like the most expedient solution. Unless we could go through the uh, the the power network that we have, and we could figure to to distribute it like directly through there. Like, Back with a network, like. That's probably in shock. Can't we do something out. involving nanites? I mean, I'm not the yeah, tech guy. Yeah, we, we're gonna inject the the network with the vaccine. By the way. Yes, of course, because we need to fix it. Otherwise, this whole plan might go critical. Yeah, probably the laborers want to dismantle that afterwards because that's not environmentally friendly. But let's take it out of commission in a controlled fashion. Yes, we're injecting computers with you know vaccines. Yeah, because that's how that works. Well, you gotta spray it down, all right? It's 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 bad. Cybonic plague is a nightmare. Just plug it into the power socket. It run on you know this liquid blood. But if we have to blow a missile, then we blow a missile. I was assuming, yeah, you're blowing up munitions in the atmosphere and hoping the winds take care of it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you hit a planet hard enough with something at high velocity, it's gonna spread to the atmosphere. Yep. Well, also, um, it's a fun fact. It's why radiology equipment is so fucked. Uh, the stainless steel being produced today is infected with radioactive particles from the Bikini Atolls and all the atomic bomb testings yep. and explosions we've done, and is useless for radiological tool making. They actually have to make it using steel from sunken warships. Yep. What? They have to dredge up warships, keep them contained, and melt like them down to steel. Pre-World War II warships. Yeah, Pre-World War II, like, like iron bars <coughs> and stuff, and they have to use that to make, like, surgical tools for, like, radiographic technology. Yeah. That's I mean really fucked up. I mean, it's, I it's, way, fucked. it's way cheaper this way, because they could thin it out, but it would be way more expensive just taking it all to your warship and stripping it for parts. Look to the atomic age. We'll also, um, make a bunch of, like, manual delivered vaccines and stuff, like the old-fashioned syringes and stuff. For the people that live in the bunkers. <laughs> bonkers. But also to give to our council so that they can send it to their apostles who then go out to the cities and start distributing it. So we shoot the vaccines up in the air so everybody gets it, and then we give placebo to the things to make sure to make them think that they're contributing. It's the optics <laughs> of the situation. Sounds good. So do do the um, the laborers and the uh, other guys? Do they have the facilities to to manufacture this vaccine on their own, or do we have to do it for them? They're manufacturing them. It's just you're kind of taking care of the big logistics. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's what we're doing for the next couple of days. Either you know, saving everybody, or you know. Witnessing the end of this planet. <laughs> oh, I guess we can't do anything for people who are infected. Get yeah, lower the infection rate. I mean, don't we have some cures? Yeah, you have cures. There you go. Yeah. We can shoot everybody. Shoot everybody. All right, you have essentially gotten this plague under control. Inertia is going to kill a lot of people, but at this stage, I'm comfortable saying that yeah, you dealt with it. Yeah, you cleaned it up. And nobody got hurt. Jack him up just, just, <laughs> just you just see this the lens in the front of his camera eye just like 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 coming I mean, it's closer to like a glare, basically. Yes, we couldn't have studied any sooner with any one volunteer. <laughs> that was the you know, most optimal way of doing things. Waiting for the kaiju to show up, waiting for the shutter dome. And not you know, killing millions of people in the process. We won. <laughs> I mean, 
that's exactly how the Golden Lagoon ends. With desolation and little fanfare. So you know what this means. This means that the Oracle's gonna finally leave this planet and never come back. It also means we uh, got to, we gotta go take care of Depth Charge. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and man, the quarantine's still in effect. He is getting such a talking to. Well, the quarantine's in effect. That means he has to come down to us. Just no, it isn't. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, but we're not gonna. Now that that's been dealt with, the Star League itself is not going to. I mean, he has the deciding factor to call off this quarantine, which means until he says, you know, so, this ain't, you know, going nowhere. And he could definitely, uh, like, he has to stay and oversee it. Most organics would just get tired and leave. Death Shard's not going to do that. Okay. Also, maybe we can find out a little more, more, more of his motivation, because, uh... I mean, we could tell him that, you know, we found, you know, wasn't it like he was looking for, and we found everything else, and confronted him that way. And there's something very interesting about the body, but he's going to want to see it himself. Yeah, I don't think he'd want to do that, but... So how do we want to approach this? I mean, well, it sort of depends. We can either... Uh directly engage, but then we might be pissing off the style leader. Speaking of which, should we try curing Waspinator? See where that takes? Oh, yeah. You can totally do it. He's in a containment pod. Just yeah. inject Sh the cure But in. should we? <laughs> I mean, yeah, we should. There's no... There's little question about that. Uh, at some point, maybe we can undo some of the crazy, crazy shit that, uh, uh, that was done to him. Okay, well, let's just take the cure ampullet, just plug it into that, your stasis pod. I mean, I don't know if you ever met Waspinator pre that nonsense, but I mean, it wasn't exactly the most uh, most uh, lethal of uh, enemies to have if you catch a drift. He's kind of the diet cola of Decepticons. <clears throat> the Nitro Zeus. Man, no one beats Nitro Zeus. Jack him up is absolutely correct. We have to do the right thing. We have to do what Optimus would do. And we have to cure him. But that doesn't mean we have to do it right now. We want to make sure that we're making the right play. We want to get to depth charge. And Waspinator is our ticket to that. The question is, which is more valuable to depth charge? A sick Waspinator or a healthy one? I think us having the cure to the Cybonic Plague will probably be very important to him because that probably... I think he wants to destroy it so that he'll be able I to... I mean, didn't he in specifically inject Waspinator though? Yes. So like... Mm-hmm. So either he wanted to make sure that he has something that he can use against Rampage or he wanted to have someone figure out how to fix it, so he'll have, you know, a way to inoculate everybody else, both Rampage, so he can kill Rampage with the, the plague. So I guess we do have to figure out exactly what his motivations were. I mean, we know in... We know his, his uh, we know his, uh, step three, but, uh, at this point it's inject Waspinator with plague, shoot down on planet, something something, kill Rampage. I'm not quite too sure about his, the steps two to whatever. Hmm. Seem to be missing his... What about... Okay. <clears throat> he doesn't know that we found Waspinator yet. Nope. So we tell him... We fix the play. Guns can come down. We were busy with the play. We weren't able to look for Waspinator. But now we think we found him. And we think Depth Charge might want to be here when we go in on it. But he probably wants to keep the quarantine up until he finds the Waspinator because that's the whole pretense of this quarantine is to keep him in. So why don't we just do the, uh, just say, hey, we got Waspinator, let's go have a talk. It's direct. Let's roll those dice. Right. So guess. we cure Waspinator before we do this. 
Are you going to talk to Lost Oh, yeah. We're going to... We're going to... We're not going to... We're going to leave, leave him restrained, but we're going to wake him up. All right. <laughs> How are you feeling? Waspinator was enjoying stasis lock. Waspinator had stasis lock food where Waspinator wasn't Waspinator. <laughs> Waspinator was cool and interesting and Hornet. Jack Waspinator's is cool. Hornet is Waspinator's alternate superhero persona. <laughs> well, I did until... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I mean, nobody says that you can be in your Hornet. No. Someone, Waspinator checked registry of names. Someone else took it. Waspinator, <laughs> you can be whoever you want to be. We all can, kids. <laughs> no, you can no, be, no, 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 no. Waspinator <laughs> wants to do crime. You could be Yellow Jacket. I don't think that's name taken. We're, we're getting sidetracked. <laughs> Immediately <laughs> I mean, sidetracked. I mean, that's obviously important to him. Waspinator, what's the most important thing in life? Surviving Revenge. the war. <laughs> Revenge. Finding out what happened to Waspinator's family. Yikes. <laughs> What did happen to Waspinator's family? Uh, Waspinator, Bumblebee, Yellow Jacket, and Hornet were all scouts made about the same time and are in different parts of the fucking galaxy. Hmm. Mm. You all suggested much cooler auto, a much cooler Transformers he could name himself after, who are <laughs> technically all his siblings. <laughs> uh, what do we want from this guy? <laughs> why I, we just, I legitimately have no idea why, why I, you, you pulled that I know, something this. on Death Charge, I guess. Yeah. Waspinator, we're going after Death Charge. And I uh, think uh, out of everyone on this planet, if anyone deserves a little bit of payback, it's you, buddy. And Waspinator, no want to fight fat, no want to fight boots, uh, jackboot bot. Hey, I, I can't blame you. Waspinator, if you keep running away from bullies, oh. you're going to be bullied all your life. <laughs> Waspinator okay with that as long as bully isn't too rough. <laughs> bullies get you know, rough, Waspinator. <laughs> Waspinator he's into it. You know? Waspinator was once tortured by Megatron. Wasn't that bad. Uh, Waspinator know, thought it'd be like, worse. You know the fact that he's like a, 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 cringing, uh, a cringing coward is like one of the few things that make him tolerable. As a you know, as a Decepticon compared to like rah rah kill all the Autobots. He's the Toady. I am going to Inspire. reveal the way. To <laughs> 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 there it is. There it is. Waspinator, you gotta start standing up for yourself. You gotta take charge of your life. Oh, no. You gotta look Depth Charge in the eye, and you gotta say, "Hey, Depth Charge." I'm not scared of you, and you're not the boss of me. And on that day, Waspinator is going to be even cooler than Hornet, and even cooler than Yellowjacket. You know why? Because Waspinator will finally be the Waspinator I know he can be. <laughs> What's the next step? Credits will be fine. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, Alright, you got his attention. So you're going to come with us, and we're going to fight Depth Charge, Together. Together, together? Together, together. Not like send Waspinator ahead first with a bunch of Energon mines attached to Waspinator. No, and then once Waspinator talks down the opposing side and reaches a deal, and they start to put their guard down, set off said mines, and blow up other side and Waspinator. You know, that Wasp sounds hilarious, <laughs> but it's really more of a Decepticon thing. You got a good head for strategy, kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's an appealing move, I'll say that. <laughs> but no, maybe like, we go in there, I hold him down with this here girder, and you get a couple shots on his head. Well, Spinator can shoot someone in the head. Yeah. And you're teaching him to stand up to bullies. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. There's a... Okay, so, bit of backstory. In Trailer Park Boys... At one point, they're trying to smuggle drugs across the border to the States, and they meet up with Sebastian Bach of Skid Row. Like, it's just him, right? And they meet up, they start to do the drug deal, it's all going great. Um, uh, 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 
Sebastian Bach is, you know, getting really high off their supply, and all of a sudden these other guys from the show, Cyrus and his gang, shows up. And Cyrus is like the guy with the gun in the show. No one uses guns because yeah. guns get you in trouble. And he's like, you're going to give us this pay cut of money, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, and you're going to fuck off. And Sebastian Bach's like, you know what you don't understand, buddy? And then he pulls out a gun. No one likes bullies anymore. And starts opening fire wildly at him. <laughs> but he just goes, nobody likes... You don't understand that nobody likes bullying anymore. And just starts shooting. So I started blasting. Yeah, yeah he, So I asked your boss, just like, bullying's wrong. And starts with an automatic weapon, opening fire on the crowd. See, kids? Guns do solve all of your problems. <laughs> I want to forge a bond with Waspinator. You've done it! Excellent. We hear Waspinator me. is as tall as Optimus or Megatron and covered in war weapons. <laughs> and I taught him how to stand up for himself. He's <laughs> a giant murder machine. Like, oh, two so million years later. All hail Emperor Waspinator! <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna leave him behind on Earth in season three, and he'll like go back to the cave. Waspinator, happy at last. Yep. Because <laughs> cavemen worshipped him. Yep. <laughs> Literally, what happened? They were playing trumpets on the using on trumpets made from the severed heads of his fellow Decepticons. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he was, Ewok style. Yeah, they were Ewok style playing bongos <laughs> on their severed heads and like using their limbs for trumpets, and he's like, "This is fine." I'm okay with this. I'm the C-3PO on this thing. <laughs> he was he was okay with all of it. Uh, Alright, so you free Waspinator from his restraints and he looms over you, ready to, to spit piss and vinegar. So we have uh, <clears throat> we have depth charge a call now? I mean yeah, sure. I'm kinda curious to see how you're gonna play this. How I'm gonna play this. He's your friend. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? All right, so just so we're on the page, the same page here. We're gonna be like, hey, we got uh, we got Waspinator. We're handing him over, and then we're gonna give him all the old. Uh, we're gonna have words with him when we arrive. See, so, yeah, well, I think what we need is for you to do to jack him up what you did to Waspinator. <laughs> you mean give him a little advice? I Tell guess. What to do? <laughs> Hype him up. <laughs> you will stand up to your friend bully. Yeah. <clears throat> Look. Uh, Jack him up. <laughs> you don't always need to be asking other people what to do or for advice all the time. You got a good head on your shoulders. You can use it to make your own plans and strategies and follow through with them. You know this, uh, you know this death charge guy. You guys go back together. You got the words in you that are going to unlock the door. You just got to reach deep down inside, figure out what it is that you can say to your old buddy death charge that is going to get him to lower those guns and get us on that ship, and then then we'll take it from there. Yeah, okay, okay that sounds oh. bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally a speech Ricky and Julian give to Corey and Trevor at Trailer Park Boys. It's like, you guys have a good head on your shoulders, thanks. You don't have to take what we say, we know, and you gotta make decisions on your own. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do. <laughs> it's fantastic. Hilarious. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna call up the death charge. Ring, 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 ring. Boo, boo, boo. boo. Hey, death charge is on the con. Yep. Hey, death charge, how you doing? Status report. Uh, yeah. Uh, we've dealt with the whole uh, plague thing, and uh, we've got uh, watch data for you. You've apprehended the prisoner. You got it. All right, schedule it for transport and bring it up to me. Yep, we're all coming. See, it was easy. I give him a good pat on the back. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are you prepping for uh, going to confront Death Charge? Well, let's take up all of our oh. guns. <laughs> Does anyone need any healing? Uh, no, I am perfectly uh, in... I think someone wants to have some you know, food and drink so we can recover your spells. Yeah, I would like to have a late lunch. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna pack. Uh, I'll use uh, a. Do you, don't, do you need spells back, or are you good? Eh, I have one thing that could use, but that's it. Okay, so you, uh, you two, and Waspinator, I guess, gets one. Yeah, let's let's, let's form, form a bond. Let's. Ha uh, ah, ha! You can all form a included. bond with Waspinator. No, 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 no.
Well, You've had a pretty rough time, but why don't you get the uh, uh, get the pick of the energy I'm thinking hang on here? Which spell do I take? He looks like he's paralyzed by decisions. <laughs> like, might I recommend the... the just you recommend one to him? Alright, yeah. he's not going to be making choices on his own. <laughs> Wasby has friends now. Now I have two friends, I don't know which is better. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I have, I have two bonds and he only has one. Ah. <laughs> Megatron has no friends. Oh god, not Patty. The <laughs> um, uh, okay, I'll take this. One. Oh my god, I forgot that I introduced Crimzeek already. What? There's absolutely an anime series of Transformers, the original G1 cartoon, where Megatron runs into a space electricity gremlin called Crimzeek. It's a little buddy that like causes mischief and in inhabits systems. I've already introduced him to you. That's what the ghosts look like. Oh, oh god. I didn't even make that up either. I, no, I know. I, I in just, Transformers it is versus just one the of the many, It is just one of the many bits of nonsense that was totally like just obliterated from my mind. <laughs> god. But in Transformers versus the Ghostbusters, uh, the spirits that show up that are like ghosts look like Kremzeek to Cybertronians. Implying that in that one episode, Megatron befriended a ghost. <laughs> a, ghost. <laughs> a fucking poltergeist! Anyway, you guys have a... You guys have a... a quiet drink. You hang out. And you're gonna call a transport down to bring you to the dark side? Yup. Yep. Alright, well for the first time in a very long time, you leave this world. Huh. Hey, good sign. He hasn't blasted out of the sky yet. I consider that a positive. Huh. So I guess we should remember not to forget about those, you know, critters Rover wants to bring with. Let's we'll see now. Oh, I'm sure Rover will have already done his collecting. <laughs> he can go on his own transport with his friends. Alright, well, the ship starts uh, taking you up to the dark side as it looms in low <coughs> orbit like a sickle. Um, I think I'll pause at that point and prep the, the, the depth charge part of this. You take the shuttle up to the dark side. Uh, is Waspinger just with you, not chained up or anything? Yeah. I guess. Cool. It's Waspinger, I mean, he's a wimp, so... If All anything. Right. You head to low orbit and dock uh, with the dark side as per last time. Um, you know, the docking station has its turrets out aimed at you, doing a teletrans doing a scan of your systems. Alert. Decepticon presence detected. I guess they changed, you know, who the ship belongs to. He did. When you first came in, the Decepticon symbols were vandalized and he had loaded the teletrans stuff in. That was, that was the first time you were here. Huh. So, um, depth charge gets on the comms. The Decepticon isn't, uh, locked down. It's Wolfsbinator, what do you expect? Lock it down, throw it in the cell. Actually, we were thinking we might come speak with you... personally. Or you can come to us. I'd actually kind of prefer that. These, uh... These gears don't move so good. Move to the cell level. I'll unlock the gear. I'll unlock the cells for you. Let's head to the bridge. Okay. Teletron, stand down. Word of power. Teletron, open. Word of power. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Alert. Alert. Teletron, stop. Priority systems have been compromised. Switching to backup. And then Teletron shuts off. Let's head on. Shockwave OS online. Word of power, stop. Compartmentalizing operating system to resist Cybertronian influences. Version 2 online. Version 1 terminated. I guess it ain't working. I mean, your thing did work. You shut off Teletran and the OS. It's just Shockwave built one that's kills itself every time. <sighs> well, let's go there faster, I guess. Attempting to breach this vessel is illogical. Terminate yourselves in the most convenient and efficient way possible. End oh. of line. Well, when he puts it like that... That's I mean, not Death just... Charge. That's Shockwave. Yeah. 
That's my character does actually say that. Oh, well, when you put it like that, it makes perfect, perfect sense. A panel opens up in the side, and a one-shot blaster for the four of you comes out of the wall. <laughs> I take the blaster and shoot the panel. Boring conversation anyway. <laughs> Shockwave, don't fuck around. Let's go. All right, you were in the haunted house set piece. Changed a little bit for me. So, uh, the ship is... The entire ship is hostile against you. You cannot hold hope here. Oh, no. Anyone who gets taken out in this place disappears. I think that will ever happen. Yeah, it's, it's going to be rough trying to do enough damage to kill you. <laughs> Shifting walls. It's easy to get lost here. It's even easier when you don't notice all the ways it changes around you. Oh. So, yeah, you start navigating the dark side. You're going to the bridge? Yes. Okay, how are you going to get to the bridge? The same way we built you last time. <coughs> Perfect. Okay, so you're going to get lost along the way and end up in the detention cell area. Yay! There are a bunch of cells. One of them is unlocked. <coughs> well, I don't think... Is that, is that coughing coming from the cell? It's coming from one of the cells, not the unlocked one. Oh, boy. All right, well, we'll head over to the, uh... It's Pterosaur. Remember? Yeah. He was imprisoned here. <coughs> you so, have to yeah, he has Cyclonic Plague. Shoot him with a cure gun. <laughs> <laughs> Terminate him. With healing. With a cure gun. Finish him. <laughs> with kindness. We cure him. You inject him. Is this some sort of Autobot torture? That oh. comes later. <laughs> uh, no, Depth Charge has kind of gone a little bit loopy even, even, uh, by just about anyone who stands. You think? <laughs> Look, you know the way to the bridge? Uh, yeah, I know the way to the bridge. Good. Just, Are uh, you lying? Yeah, he's super cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not letting him out. <laughs> I have temporary cell-induced amnesia. <laughs> Once I leave this cell, I'll remember where the bridge is. Look, this guy's not going to do anything good for us. We did what we needed to do. He's not going to die. Whoa, whoa, Let's whoa. get back to going to the bridge. Whoa, what about, what about... This statement is false. It is. Damn it. <laughs> oh, no. Scrap. My head. <laughs> blood, sp blood sprayed everywhere. Oh, I guess it was human. I guess it was a human-made Cybertronian. <laughs> the GoBot. How many no ways out of this place out there? Uh, there is an exit hallway on either end of this cell block. <coughs> okay. Let's take a one. Yeah, okay. That's fair. Okay. We head over to one. I take my girder and I do a big Does X. Oh, no, wait. I, uh, never mind. That's a different character. I do a big X in the wall. There, uh, there's another cell guy in here, eh? Oh, I've yeah. forgotten about the poor sick little guy that throws the gun? No, Brainiac is here, guys. This was the prison ship oh, he was consigned right, to. Right, 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 oh. right. Oh, hey, Brainiac. Yeah, he's not talking or looking conscious. He's plugged into his cell. Yeah, unless, what do you say? Do you want to wake him up or leave him alone? I'm. I'm no, I, I think we just keep going. Yeah. Just, just let me remind you guys that Brainiac is on board. Okay. What you doing there, Tyler? I'm going to have my lantern assume two forms. The first is it's gonna charge my overshield, and it's also going to enter lantern form. So he's gonna walk ahead in front of us, lighting the way and shining on things. Yeah. All right. Triggering traps, I see. <laughs> All right, well, you're heading forward. And, all of a sudden, uh, your lantern light bumps into a wall. Okay. It's a force field. One bumps up behind you. The walls open up. Guns come out. Power wards stop? Yeah, okay. 
Does it, like does that cost you shit? I mean, uh, Liz, that triggers the word. <coughs> I think he has to like pick a word and then he can keep using that word. It's like, um, yeah, because it normally affects like the natural world and what have you. It's like, oh, you have power word burn. I can just set fire to everything that's natural. And we start with you know, threats. Um, um, threats to the world and those that mean you harm resist I'm, your words. Unnatural things to the world and those that mean you harm resist the words of power. Okay, well, this swarm of arrows is a threat. Okay. And then it says below it. Uh, oh, yeah, my cuts can going to be as hard as they want. Y'all take damage. Yeah. How's this? Um, no. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> I'm listening. <clears throat> I am going to use my animal, one of my animal traits, which is triggered when I would take damage. Uh, I describe how it stops the damage, and it does. I am going to use my overwhelming strength to just reach out and rip all the guns out of the wall. Okay, sure. And Do that it. checks off my overwhelming strength. All right, you disable the kill yeah. corridor. Those two barriers are still up, and they have the stat that they cannot take damage. Okay. Let me take you in this. Alright, so uh, I, plead, uh, I pull out a, uh, uh, basically a bottle marked like, like, it's Rolling Bot uh, brand Energon. It's, it's got a bunch of X's on it and, like, defective batch. And basically just opens it up, and uh, a bunch of Energon shoots out, and it disables the, uh, the force field. It is my burglar kit. Okay. I will use an item from it to bypass this. This burglar kit just let you do that? It is a useful item that is a burglar kit. Sure. I'll let it happen. You disable the impenetrable force fields. <clears throat> All right. So you can see... Uh, <clears throat> that was pretty scary there, Waspinator, wasn't it? But you saw... Waspinator's not with you. Why not? I lost track of him. What do you mean we lost track <laughs> of him? He's seven feet taller than all of you, and you lost track of him. <laughs> When did that happen? <laughs> Just now. Well, what are you looking at? Our companions. They're all here. But no, no wasp Co Waspinator's one of my companions now. You lost track of look, him. Look, look, this is just something you got to get used to. It's like, it's like with me. Sometimes I vanish and just. just that's the do you want to look knows. for him? Let's yes, go I deal. Look for him. Why don't right. we go deal with the the the, the you turn around threat. and go back to the cell. Because look. he's in his cell. Waspinator, well, that's not what he taught you. <laughs> <laughs> Was this not part of the plan? No, Waspinator. The plan is that you come with us, and we go and we punch Depth Charge in the face. That's the only way you'll come into your own. You cannot teach you a lesson to just go into your locker and lock yourself in just because the bully told you to. <laughs> you to build up your confidence. Also, right, Waspinator like, walks up and tries to unlock the door. It's locked. Why did you lock yourself in, Waspinator? <laughs> Was that not the plan? <laughs> oh. Can you? How many uses do you have on your burger? Okay. <laughs> Power one. ward open. There, there we go. <laughs> so, now that we're looks on... like you can use some backup over there. <laughs> yes, we are fetching Waspinator. <laughs> low blow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I we, felt that one. We bring a... Waspinator over you. Disappointing day for Terrasaur. <laughs> hey, Waspin, do you hear that? They like you more than Terrasaur. <laughs> That's fair. Terrasaur like bootleg Starscream. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Even Waspinator has standards. Good for you. <clears throat> Alright, we head back down the hallway. And this time we have a marching order where <laughs> Waspinator is central. Waspinator is in the middle. We're full back to D and D. Yeah, I will go first with my light, then Waspinator, then you two. Who has a ten foot pole? Do you remember a Link to the Past? Yes. Like the game? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember when you go into the Dark World, you have to save that princess and she has to travel with you, and she keeps getting herself into trouble the entire time, and turns yeah. out she's the boss monster? I was just that was flashing in my head now. <laughs> It's not going to happen. Waspinator's not anything. <laughs> not yet. It is me, Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Star Wars, but not giving a fuck. 
One day, Devin. One day. One day. Okay, you continue back down that hallway. The damage to the walls isn't there. Mm-hmm. I guess it was all an illusion. It's kind of fucking my hands. <laughs> you did this to yourself. <laughs> That's really hurts. Alright, yeah, we keep going. Don't self-harm, guys. Intruders, this is the shockwave operating system. Please terminate your cell. Terminate your cells and cease this intrusion. End of line. We already did. We're ghosts. No, 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 no. What, what are we say to bullies? Initiating <laughs> anti-spirit protocols. <laughs> <laughs> Ecto-3. Comrade? Yeah. Yes? Detecting builds up of EKG machinery. Uh, we'll elaborate. Elaborate. There is an think... EKG pulse forming in ship. I'm going to... Polarized hull. Uh, will that be bad for us? Hmm. Will not be bad for non for Cybertronian life. Uh, okay, no season was Rainiac. nice. Oh, that's tragic. Shall we continue? <laughs> <sighs> so yeah, eventually you guys, you just have this wall of energy passing through you guys constantly, like going back and forth. Like they're trying to vacuum you up, but they keep... Oh no, it's, it's like a bug zapper field. I'm like, remember that episode of Star Trek The Next Generation where Picard I accidentally... I think about it all the time. Right? Yeah. Where he gets left behind on the Enterprise and he has to, like, use a saddle Just to beat a bunch of people. Yeah. He punches a... He pushes a woman into a laser field and disintegrates her and goes, I got away with murder. Me, Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> <laughs> I love the... I love death. <laughs> that episode of TNG. Oh. Yeah, he got a taste for it. He pretended to be the barber. That beam is going back and forth. Doesn't hurt you guys. You're Cybertronian. What about the Nosis, though? Ooh, what about the Nosis? This will I... definitely probably kill them. Thanks. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we haven't even established whether they're here or not. They're the Schrodinger's Nosis now. Of course they're here. They're always here. Well then. <laughs> We hated knowing you. <laughs> okay. Damn you, mermaid! Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously I mermaid. have to deal with this. <laughs> Hearts oh, count. When, when it's possibly killing Ian's companions or fucking killing Brainiac, no one cares. No, really they don't. I it's cared Brainiac. Brainiac. Brainiac, but I wasn't worth bending resources for. To known our many. So I know technically I can make this cut as hard as I want and just kill your Gnosis, fuck you, but I'll, I'll give you a chance now that you understand the gravity position, <laughs> because you forgot the Gnosis were here. I didn't forget they were here, I thought yeah. that they were robots. They're not, ro they're, they're they're not robots, Cybertronians. but they're not Cybertronian. They're knockoff toys. Made from cheaper materials. Cheaper materials. <laughs> Inferior technology. Can I bend light to create a wall around the Gnosis that will protect them from the, uh, the sweep? Sure. Does bend light cost anything? Oh yeah, that costs the You're spell machine. that I just got back. There it is! <laughs> Alright. And they have to stay there until I turn the sweep off. Because if they leave the wall... They well, can I just them. travel with you? Can't you just say you spent the bend light to like polarize nope, the light their... grows still forming a wall of hard light. I mean, I think you can make the case of just being like, as a reaction to this cut, I will spend this spell and polarize their plating. Okay, if, I, if you give them. it to me, I'll make a bubble around them that comes yeah, with them. You fucking polarize them or whatever, and it's gonna reflect it. They have like chromium plating, so now it's like a rainbow laser show every time it hits them. Pew 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 pew. pew. <laughs> like Disco <laughs> Janet from The Good Place. I was picturing a Nitro Z being like, nice, you gotta hook me up. <laughs> If I could, Nitro Zeus would be here. We're all shiny now. I suddenly feel the need to go like this and fire my laser. Shiny and chrome. All right, you continue traveling down the hallway, and eventually it's going to lead you back to the cell block. Through the other door? Yeah. No, it's the one you came through. Non-Euclidean geometry. Hey, uh... It's those same guys. Let's try the other end. I mean, it's... What if we walk backwards? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, 
in Super Mario 64 to get up the endless staircase? No, I mean, no like in the other Fellowship game, but yeah. yeah. Or we could start blasting. I mean, uh, hacking the computer would be one option. Uh, if you can come up with uh, a theory, you could, you know, do that thing. I only have the one camera. Death perception. System. System alert. This is the shockwave operating system. Intruders need to need to immediately terminate themselves at the their, at the earliest convenience to process. Should we try hey, I got it out? I got, I got one for you. Let me try this. Uh, query. What will happen if we run into depth charge? Subject depth charge <coughs> not found in files. Well, he's going to probably... We're going to get into a fight and he's going to kill us. So if we can get to him... Termination of the intruders is an agreeable outcome. If you could uh, just let, it, let us get to him, then he can terminate us and we can be... That, that'll solve your problem. I mean, I'm not even lying. I mean, yeah. We're, we're not the intro this, we're just seeing all the slaves of this here Decepticon. Nah, just kidding. You could try <laughs> to engage with the Shockwave operating system. It's his fucking ship. Yeah. Uh, there is a, a, a there is an evil bastard uh, who uh, named Depchage who has taken over the ship. Uh, I don't know what kind of programs you got in there, but you just screw around with a Cybonic Plague, something that is a, a extinction level uh, pile of nonsense. Uh, that even, I think, that... Actually, do I know this? Soundwave doesn't... Then... Shockwave <laughs> is a monster. Yeah. Yeah. Shockwave. Without conscious or emotion. Yeah, this is empathy. Shockwave, not not Not, not Soundwave. Sound okay. right, yeah. Soundwave yeah. is a much yeah. okayer bot. You're a... Uh, Wrong guy. Your yeah. initial, if you let us get to the bridge, we will die, is a much better... Yeah, let's just market. go with that one. Yeah, it's not going to do that. <laughs> For you. you gotta give it more. Someone needs some meals. Yeah, I'm gonna give it wisdom. <laughs> uh, I was also gonna suggest someone. Uh, I was trying to say without invoking the rules, open yep. your eyes, because my character is if he does that, mm. will automatically fail. Uh, what do you mean? Look open closely. Your eyes. Look closer. Oh, look closely. Open uh, your eyes. I have Wait, I have like a negative were forty-seven stuck together. In senses. So sure. Yeah, I'm gonna try and. <coughs> engage with the operating system and look closely. Alright, what do you... Uh, do the conversation. Talk. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh... Your Shockwave OS, eh? Shockwave operating... The Shockwave operating system is now operational. End of line. What is your directive? Terminate... Sorry, I got ahead of myself. Win the war for Cybertron for Megatron. What is your current directive? Win the war for Cybertron for Lord Megatron by terminating the intruders on this vessel. How many intruders are on this vessel? The exact number of you people. But he gives you the number for all of you guys. All of us plus Brainiac plus Terrador. Not Pterosaur. Not Pterosaur. Pterosaur is uh, designated as subject as like a subject in Shockwave's files. Okay. Same with Waspinator, probably. And nope, Waspinator's Garbo. Shockwave does not care. So just us and our companions? Yeah. Okay. And Waspinator. And Waspinator. And Depth Charge doesn't show up then? Nope. Okay. Who is in command of this vessel? The command bot is in command of this vessel. End of line. Let's see, uh, the command bot. That a command sense. bot. A bot who is in command. The captain. Who's in? Ca who's captain this vessel? The captain. What is the name of the shit? Is the uh, is the is the identification of the bot? Uh, is there a way we could convince them that either we are Decepticons uh, that or to get rid of the captain? That's that first one. Yeah. <clears throat> what is the name of the bot in command of this vessel? Shockwave Experiment 0005, Predacon, Pterosaur. <laughs> well then. 
interesting. Is he talking about me? <clears throat> yeah. Can That's you... probably because Death Charge did this. He kind of gestures with his manacled hands to his chest cavity, where his hole is chest cavity. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? A bunch of my guts he ripped out, and now the ship thinks that I'm on the bridge. So it's not responding to commands from Death Charge, it's responding to commands from Death Charge using Pterosaurus. If you're be being a duck, you're kind of thinking that uh, Death Charge probably ripped out his uh, IFF device, his friend or foe device, okay. which is probably tied into his Decepticon uh, brand and all that, like all that good stuff. He's using Decepticon war codes. So if he healed Pterosaur and restore his IFF... I guess, or... Split. Tell the ship that pterosaur is here. <laughs> I guess we could do that. It's like initiates scan of the room, looking for pterosaur. Is that, is that what you tell it? I guess, yeah. No IFF detected. Do visual scan. He counts number of intruders in here, but doesn't count pterosaur. Mm. So, uh, if pterosaur is here, little logic problem. Uh, who's in, in command right now and running things from your bridge? He has a hint, it's an Autobot. Logic dictates that subject pterosaur is in the cell block. Logic dictates that pterosaur is in command of this ship. Pterosaur is commanding this ship from the bridge. Um, how did that work? Pass those two statements. It starts going into a feedback loop. Yeah. It is not logical. It is not logical. And, and eventually it just kills itself. Oh, good. Well, then, does version 3 come online? Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, logic bombed it. Well, maybe let's try going on now. Uh, you know, if you take me along with you, dot, 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 I probably have access codes, all sorts of codes. You say that, but do you? I have cell amnesia. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably remember all sorts of things as I'm outside of these four walls. You know, cell amnesia is very closely related, and I'm speaking as a medical professional here, to girder amnesia. <laughs> I'm wondering if the two of them won't cancel each other out. <laughs> it's not an oil frying man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to break the guy with us. See, what I thought you were going to do was you were going to be like, hey, you should scan this place. And then you like root around in his guts for some blood and just like put it on the scan and be like, hey, yeah, that's Pterosaur. That's his CNA. Easy, just... Carve out his arm. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were gonna like cut his arm off and use it for like hand pads that are everywhere. It's like it's like just ah, those Autobots could get by the AI if they were if they were to chop off Pterosaur's arm and, and use it to scan the things. Wait a minute, they're Autobots. There's no way they would do that. <laughs> <laughs> da -da -da -da. <laughs> Immediately cuts the Pterosaur screaming. <laughs> Thanks, Pterosaur. <laughs> turning on yeah, the AI. Scan us and wave goodbye. <laughs> Waving a pterosaur <laughs> with his hand, goodbye. <laughs> na 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 na. <sighs> I think we try and move on without him. Yeah. All right. Well, the charm. you're able to get two. Now that we're not being actively thrown around the ship by an AI. Right. No wasp and eight are AI online. All right. <laughs> You can't fool me, I'm stupid. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Who wrote you? Well, weekly for Portal 2. Okay, so uh, you're eventually able to navigate your way to the bridge. I'm going to throw a cut at you as more machine guns. You're going to take damage. Okay. More turrets open up, you know, on bridge security to open fire on you before you get to it. Um, shall I try and overcome? 
Oh no, it's a hard cut. It's a hard cut. Oh, okay. Unless you have a trick to stop it, I'm just going to start mowing into you. Serenity. Because I don't mean harm. Is this You're the... actively invading this ship to kick Death Charge's yeah. ass. We're going here to talk with him. <laughs> oh, is that what we'll, we'll, Why did you bring Lost Can we play that? Jimmy, play that clip back. We're going to get to Death Charge and we're going to kick his ass. <laughs> See, I don't want to be ah, you're sure. Involved. You fucker, you're involved. Fine, I'll use up my armor for my power wards. There you go. Oh, boo, boo, you got to use some power wards. Oh, no. My magic suddenly works now. Now that we're on the planet with some inferior technology. I use up my light shield. And then I heal you. Yeah, I'll take damage <laughs> and... Yeah. I'll use up my light shield. I'll let you get shot and then I'll fix you. Yeah, sounds good. Again in the freaking camera! What about your allies and Waspinator? Uh... What about them? <laughs> <laughs> Hard cuts usually don't hit compan... Uh, usually oh, this don't. is hitting everyone. And hard cuts absolutely should be hitting companions. It's one of the best ways to fuck you guys over is to kneecap you and a friend. Because we can't. I'll overcome. use my light shield on Waspinator instead and take the damage on myself. Yeah, you will. And my other companions will cl cluster behind his great bulk. All right, fine. Com That's fine. Comrade, no. <laughs> yeah. Waspinator not aerated. Definitely. Told you I had your back, kid. It's good to have friends. I it took a bullet in the knee, though. That wasn't supposed to be a reference. <laughs> it's just, it took a bullet in the knee. It's fine. Yeah, I was just thinking of a place that would make me limp. <laughs> yeah. Knee's a pretty good one. Alright, you're at the bridge door. The door is shut and locked down. Power ward open. Does that cost you shit? Unless that's a threat to the world or something that opposes me, no. Okay. I'm just <laughs> it's a natural thing. <laughs> I'm just making sure. All right, the bridge opens. What do I got here? What do I got here? Nope. So. The Bridge of the Dark Side is cavernous, full of stalactites and stalagmites of control modules, and uh, has turrets lining it as those stalactites transform into weapon systems. Uh, Death Charge is still sitting on the bridge chair, staring directly ahead at monitors he's monitoring. So it's treason, then. Just a sec. <coughs> I grab Screamo and I, like pass his healing light over myself and then set him back down on the ground. Sorry, you were John at me? <laughs> he doesn't have a oh job. boy, I cannot <laughs> wait to hear why, why, uh, uh, yeah, this, this line of nonsense. Give us your sob story. <laughs> You're aiding a Decepticon war criminal. Well, it was made as a war criminal now. Look, we just spent the last month picking us picking our way through a, uh, a through organic dam uh, organic. Do you have any idea what what those things do to your olfactory senses in the in the line of their death? No, I had them removed along with the along with the rest of the unnecessary parts of my face plating. Uh, he just revealed something to you that's kind of relevant. He removed him along with the rest. He did that to himself. He did you to himself. You imperted yourself? Why would you even do that? It was logical. Shockwave. Oh well, that just, <laughs> oh, well, that just explains everything. And by everything, I mean nothing. You know what it's like to lose? Personally? Just, no. Just, you just... His, his hands basically go up and... He has the same things. Him. Yeah. There's this no war is a losing war, and it's because our side is... It's because the Autobots are destined to lose. None of the Autobot High Command has any of the ambition, knowledge, cunning, 
or skill set to win a war of this scale. I'm just going to start, like, doing stretches. Fine. <laughs> Take the air out of it. <laughs> oh, but, uh, so, you would... But you do, of course. No, for a time I thought the Wreckers would, when my Spark Twin joined them. You might remember him. Sea Spray, before he was offlined by some insect creation of shockwaves. He had my face. So I removed it when he went offline. Look, grief makes us all do crazy things. But you gotta take a step back and look at yourself. Sea spray was the last was the last straw was the last bearing in a series of last bearings. No one here really knows what happened with Shockwave's predicate experiments, do they? Do you have any idea what was on the Elkinor? Actually, no. I was kind of wondering that myself. Anyone here ever heard of the planet Tyrus or the Tyrus Accords or Ultra Magnus? Oh, boy. Tyrus was my world. It was the planet I was assigned to by Autobot High Command. It was a world we were trying to save from the Decepticons' infiltration. It was a planet of technologists and sorcerers. There were a people on that planet called the Maasai, who Megatron was trading Cybertronian technology with, and they put together a device called a Thought Bomb. Very interesting name for a very interesting doomsday device. When it went off, every organic being on the planet was wiped out because it was a catalyst for a shockwave experiment to create an unkillable Cybertronian, Rampage. I was one of five people to survive that planet, all included. All of my squad mates, every other Cybertronian on there that wasn't in orbit or in the middle of a conflict at the time, gone, in the blink of an eye, and it was used to make another war machine. And so that's why you pulled out the plague. Rampage is unkillable. He cannot be deactivated. Autobot High Command has dealt with him before. Optimus has gotten into a... Optimus, he says with a kind of airs, has gotten into a single combat with Rampage. It got back up. I've chased it. I've chased it round our spiral galaxy to this one. I've chased it through black holes. I've chased it through white stars and pulsars and singularities. And it always gets back up. So I got imaginative. How do you kill something that can't be killed? What's, what are your suggestions? You kill something that kills everything? Possible fall versus well, if walking. it just keeps getting back up, that just means we gotta keep putting it back down. That doesn't mean we become worse than it it's ourselves. The solution isn't to kill it. The solution is to punish it. Cripple it. No. No. You think too small. You think like Autobots. You punish it. What's the worst thing for something like Rampage? The sadist, the cannibal, something that delights in eating people while they're still alive. Not having anything to kill. Being alone. And the solution was simple. I knew Shockwave had played with pretender technology. I knew Waspinator was here. I knew using Brainiac's processing power that we, I could get the plague to mutate in just the way I wanted it. And now it's a perfect solution. Rampage is on his way here, following Pterosaur's tracking signal because they're, they're tied together with the Enigma of Combination. He'll reach this world, he'll combine with Pterosaur and the rest of his crew and become Predaking, and he'll infect every single one of them. And they'll die. They're not immortal. And then every world Rampage goes to, he'll be a carrier. That whole world will die off within a cycle, a solar cycle. And the technology will fail, and the life forms will die. And there'll be nothing for him to do but sit on that planet till he scrounges up enough material to leave and go to the next planet. And it'll happen again. Forever. The 
rest of eternity in this universe with nothing to torture and nothing to kill. Because it all dies before it gets to him. So your solution is literally to kill everything in the universe, pretty much. Just planets Rampage touches down on. I'm not like other people in the Autobots war. I fully appreciate and understand that the people on this planet are people and are alive and have wills. I just don't care. Rampage is a bigger threat. Hmm. It's the ultimate solution. It solves nothing. Rampage still doesn't die. You just help him kill more people more effectively, and you make him suffer a little while he does it. Rampage doesn't Suffering. want to kill people effectively. Rampage wants to play. Right, right. But taking something away from Rampage isn't winning. It's just a twisted version of losing. It's hurting him. It's a form of justice, or at least revenge. You are literally killing... Uh, killing billions of people because someone, uh, because I well, mean, frankly, you've gone crazy. If you think about it, if Rampage appears on the planet, they're dead anyway. You it's merciful for what Rampage does to life forms he comes across. Or you could just, like, get Rampage and lock him up in a black hole or something. We did that. It didn't stick. <laughs> I was there with Magnus when we threw him in a singularity well. He got out. I have solved the Rampage problem. You have solved nothing. I have avenged Seaspray's death. Seaspray would be disgusted. Well, it's a good thing I don't have to see his face anymore in my reflection. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Side note for people who weren't around for season one they met Seaspray's ghost in season one. <laughs> Oh. Seaspray's an established character we've brought up before. Yeah. Nicole, who's a wrecker, which Seaspray was, encountered his like drowning ghost, who was like warning her about how awful things were gonna get. He wasn't wrong. <laughs> he wasn't wrong. Uh. Anyway, all of you, including Depth Charge, go into a coma because the other half of the shoe's dropping. Oh, which is here it comes. Is this being... Are we being taken out? No, no, you're not taken out. Oh my fucking Christ, no. But your Teletrans systems all simultaneously say that you have an update queued up and the update's running now. And then you all go into a coma briefly. And then your Teletrans boot back up. Like, cold. Like, it takes a while. All your organs have to start funneling again. You have to come out of stasis. You were in stasis lock briefly. And, like, nothing is working properly. Okay. The ship's power is completely off. You're adrift. Technically, you're starting to destabilize from orbit. And if you were on the 8-track, it's having the same problem. Well, that doesn't bother well for the planet, because we're harder than it. <laughs> system, uh, system's been rebooted. What, what's going on? Teletran Network Hello? established. Running system updates. Establishing Teletran connection. Initiating file flutter.msg. Okay. So, a data file starts playing as you're spooling back up that you cannot minimize. Neither can depth charge. He's openly kind of trying to fire, but his weapon is also tied to the Teletran. You guys are having issues. All of your yep. organs are not working. Your heart isn't going right. You had a quick series of images and, like, comprehensive information contained in the images. Large ships that are shaped like cuttlefish blooming down on Cybertron. Uh, a Decepticon that's oozing and falling apart that's clearly a Decepticon scientist. And the backstory for Season 1. Unicron is real. He has children. They are coming from the outside of the galaxy. If they ever find Cybertron, they'll kill everyone. And there won't be a war between Autobots and Decepticons. They'll just be Unicron gutting God. Uh, for obvious reasons, this message is being conveyed to you through the Teletran network everyone shares, because then you can't pinpoint a location back to Cybertron. So, it's coming from a council of Cybertronians on the planet, held by a, like, lead 
hero slash message bringer called Flutter. Please. I had to sync up time with season one eventually. Yeah. <laughs> so you're all thrown into problems right now. You know, you're all ha- you can't have hope at the moment. And the both ships shut off as Teletran's taking a much longer time to boot the entire ships back. Oh. Yeah, every Autobot and Decepticon in the universe got that message. Well, some will revel in this, but... Because, cards on the table, no fucking Cybertronian is crazy enough to tell the Unicron things where Cybertron is. Literally none of them. That's an end game. No one wants that end game. Good like, Megatron's that. not gonna get that message, which he definitely got, and go, hmm... <laughs> I should use this from our granite. She's gonna be like, wow, we should kill those things. What if I, I put set... on my list of things to wipe out forever because I hate? See, I just need to, you know, take whatever, you know, Optimus is, give it the seven time trans ponder, and then, you know, everything will solve itself other... out. Also, ah, that's cowardly. Yeah. Do that. All the other hand, Starscream is stupid enough to. Starscream is a moron, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure Flutter did not anticipate just how <laughs> fucking stupid Starscream is. No one can. <laughs> if I if I kill everyone yes Unicron we'll work together <laughs> he did that once and he got one up on Unicron oh Unicron so that was, that was uh, another unintentionally terrible accent by the way Devin <laughs> what the accent you just did for, yeah. for Starscream? Didn't oh, sound like Starscream. Yeah. Yeah. A little closer to Gargamel or something? It sounded like a, ch- like a really bad racist Chinese accent. No, it did not. No. You can't keep yeah. saying these things into the microphone. It did. Christ. It's, to be fair, it is really hard to duplicate Chris Lyman's voice. Yeah, no. A guy smoked cigarettes every day of his life since he was eight, and uh, Peter C- Culling kept having to break him out of walk-up because he kept being arrested before it takes. <laughs> That actually happened. Peter Culling, Optimus, he had to go to jail and pay bail to get Starscream's voice actor out, because the dude had problems. <laughs> that happened more than once. Okay. I think we should help the system reboot faster, otherwise we'll be stuck in this plan for a longer time. Well, you're in free fall right now. Well, I can't live the whole shit, guys. <laughs> What what are y'all doing? Oh, the Nosies are fine. Oh, that's good. <laughs> they're, they're, they're standing at perfect attention with their magnetic feet on the deck plane. <laughs> I'm still spooling up. I take a while to uh, to get going. Uh, I'm going to burn my... One of my emergency... Uh, my an Energon Purge. So I'm going to use my... Uh, uh, another deep... Uh, reboot brand... Uh, brand oh, Autobot. God. Yeah, so I'll burn my uh, bottle of elven wine. Ooh. So the good uh-huh. news is I'm healed. The bad news is I'm drunk as it's now purging my purging There system. it is. There it Why is. Why does he need healing? I'm assuming where I can use Reboot. the in, instead of using this for damage, I can use this to read faster. faster. Sure. You sacrifice an item to do a thing. Yeah. That's perfectly acceptable. Wow. Wow. Teletrix is still booting and still in alert mode, but you're not getting any of that because you know, it's booting, so it doesn't even know what problems it's in. It knows it's in a problem, it just doesn't know what. Okay, uh, time to get the other, uh, time to get the other, someone who might know how to fix this nonsense up back up. All right, what do we got here? Ah, who would that possibly be? <laughs> who could help you? Was Venator, we believe in you. Don't <laughs> fail us now. You're our only hope. I don't know who can fix the show. No, well, I, I gotta get YouTube back up, right? I think. Well, so we'll you can spool to... up on our own, right? Yeah, you guys are coming time. back up. It's yeah. taking time, precious time. You do yeah. something. Push all the buttons on the ship. Kill depth charge. Yeah, all the, that. Throwing, throwing depth charge out of the uh... through a fucking window. <laughs> yeah, basically <laughs> just like uh, we have really. bigger problems to deal with. So. Death Charge is just a comparatively minor problem, so I just grab him and basically hurl him out of an airlock. I'll deal with him. Out the front screen. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Death Charge! Alright, I'll. He's a drift. I'll allow it. No, no, drift is a different character. <laughs> he showed up in season one. What is it called? Shipwrecked or Lost at Sea or. Flotsam and Jetsam? Yeah, the thing we had to go through with in episode one. 
So, question. And I sort of away from the planet. What's uh, Death Charge Alt Mode? What does he do? Death Charge original Alt Mode was a like deep sea exploration vehicle, like Sea Spray, because they're both uh -huh. they're both water Autobots. Uh, his Alt Mode right now is a Judge Dread motorcycle the size of a truck. Okay, so not a flyer. Good. No, no he cannot fly. <laughs> He's like the Tortuga in Lancer. He's a big, bulky boy. Good. Okay, well... Apparently he has like a shotgun, a dread gun, a whole deal. He prepares himself with shotguns, finger guns, pew 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 pew. Oh, as he goes <laughs> out into low orbit. He'll survive this. Alright, so these two ships are going to crash down the planet and probably really fuck him up, because your ships are a nightmare. Screamer boots up a lot faster than I do. Woohoo! 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 Jumps up on my chest and So starts. does Ecto 3 and Rocketta. Because they're smaller, they have tinier bodies. Uh, but only Screamo can help me. So he starts. Ecto 3 and Rocketta kill themselves. <laughs> Seeing as you no longer love them. <laughs> Goodbye, comrade. But one life to give for the resistance. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pointless death. <laughs> all death is. Yes, they all are one. Let's expedite the process. <laughs> yeah, you did, did you? Mm -hmm. You really want to cash that here. Huh? What's, what's wrong with the ship? Thing? What? Uh, it's booting, so nothing's working. And how would we be able to help it? Get the engines firing up and stabilizing? And so is that something that can be done manually? Yes! Cybertron technology can be completely done manually. You could literally have a guy pumping the ship, like, like cranks and stuff, to get it working. Okay. My little light is not going to start healing me. Instead, it's going to start flashing simple messages to the Gnosis to get them to follow it. Apple. Cranberry. <laughs> purple worm. And they're like, we have to go help run the bridge. <laughs> and, then and then it's going to run off down to the engines. Alright, so... This is a reference no one will get, but yeah, um, Screamo creates a holographic image of a rhinoceros, and the Gnosis instant fuckingly know what to do. <laughs> and no one here gets that reference, because it's too old. Yeah, what Whoa. is it? Do you want me to tell you? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm kidding. Okay. just toss that out. <laughs> There's this old British 90s cartoon series called Captain Star, and oh. it's amazing, and you should oh, watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In one episode, the psychologist has a imager that images what you're feeling on the inside, and they give it to the sh ship's chef who like, has a lot of anxieties, and his psychic projection is a rhinoceros, which for him means anxiety and fear. Later they find a giant cat and hook it up, and it creates a rhinoceros, and for the cat it means home, because its home is in the rhinoceros nebula. <laughs> which, once the cat goes through the rhinoceros nebula, it cuts to live action, it's a cat walking in through a cat flap. So it's like, Jingles, where did you get off to? That's adorable, I don't remember that. It's an amazing show, I recommend everyone watches Captain Star. Oh yeah, it's I love worth it. it. <laughs> There's a lot of humor I use that's locked away in those episodes I don't remember anymore. But Captain Star is described, and this is the first where I came across the word creation before Exalted. Captain Star is, con Star is consistently described as the most interesting man in all of creation. Huh. Yeah, this hero does a rhinoceros and the Gnosis know what to do. Okay, I've contributed. Good. Alright, uh... Should I create a power word start? <laughs> Scribble it into my word list. Uh, I, I can try and get the, I can try and get the, uh, the, the computer to work faster. You say to my inert body. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you booted up first. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Never mind. You literally just hop the guy through a window. And you're like, come on, guys, let's go. And it's like oh. the Beast Wars cartoon where all the Autobots are knocked out on the arc, dead and cold. <laughs> oh my. You're like, start right. monologuing, yes. Yeah. So Jack looks just like, you guys still want to go with that? God. <laughs> start uh, monologuing, like you stand over Anvil's body, charging up your canopy like, and as the covenant of Primus has foretold, <laughs> reap the whirlwind! Uh, That's literally from the episode. Megatron is cuckoo crazy in that. Megatron hey, is the lesson. I know what to do. We shut off the AI. We did it. So yeah, all right. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that means if we turned it back on, oh wait, no, we're probably using stupid like get the target out of space or something like that. Because Why would it do that? Who cares about death charge? It doesn't. It doesn't even know he's alive. 
fired guns towards the planet, so we propel ourselves upwards. <laughs> <laughs> Start shooting at the planet to shoot through it. We Fine, really fire didn't the guns. Think you would be in charge to give you one last hope before we destroyed you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we left you in charge as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we go let's fire retrograde. It's like that Orbital one episode. Mechanics. It's like that one episode of the Twilight thing. We have, we have, we have united in peace. You said you you hate all our stupid petty wars. Yeah, we're gonna kill you. You see, you thought you were joking. You're joking about you, you you fighting. No, 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 no. You're poor at making. You're your, poor at making war. Yeah. You were supposed to be good at it. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna exterminate your planet now because you're bad soldiers. We bred you to be soldiers. That's why you're always fighting with each other. And you made world peace in a day. God damn it! Thanks, Unicron. So, yeah, I'm gonna burn my other burglar tools. <laughs> okay. And I'm gonna rip out basically like a, uh, uh, a, a screwdriver, and I'm gonna hotwire the ship. You're gonna hotwire the shockwave operating system to override the Teletran? Yeah, basically, and, and re get, get this thing. Uh, shockwave operating system operational. Running, spooling up engines, spooling up systems. End of line. Alright, the ship's starting to come power back on under the shockwave OS. Alright, so... Um, Whenever you guys want to wake up. Yeah, and also, by the way, just so you... And, it's, <laughs> and of course, this, in order to complete the uh, complete thing, I threw him off, right? Yeah, yeah. While I was doing that... You you his, thanks, Pterosaur! You grabbed his IFF? Yep. I knew he had it. Subject Pterosaur, please begin issuing the appropriate commands, as expected by shockwave. End of line. Ha ha ha! I am Big Meanie! Wait, is it? That's Intelligence not a thought, scan right? accepted. Welcome, Captain Pterosaur. We should probably not explode by running into that stuff. Take us away over there. I mean, Linguistic we'll... symmetry recognized. <laughs> Enacting plan, Captain Pterosaur. I mean, A-Track will take a couple more minutes to boot up. What if we rammed into it? <laughs> or we've, we've got, like, tractor things. On a ship that functions, yes. This has ramming speed, so we can Oh, the dark the side? Loft. The dark side's tractor beam is, you know how it's kind of shaped like a trident? Yeah. Well, it'll one of the tridents will ram into a ship and open up and be the docking bay, and the Decepticons will pour out. Mm. That's its tractor <laughs> beam. There you go. You use it for gunning in space. Well, this is going to suck, and uh, the captain's going to tan my high, but it's probably better than uh, the loss of all hands and the destruction of the planet. So, uh, I mean, the planet will be fine. It's just, I mean, our wherever ship the fine. ship crashes, the ship's gonna be fine, <laughs> and wherever the and, and the planet will be okay. And I mean, wherever you crash, though, that is a robot's collection might have a problem. Maybe they just find like you still like stud stud foam. He's got the wind shock foam. Yeah, it's just it's frozen there. Will that push? Uh, can I can I have the trident then in order to push the, uh, the dark side? Yeah, uh, the dark side to push the uh, eight track out of, out of the way. All right, full speeds ahead with the no CNU on the ship. You're gonna ram your own ship. And uh, we will open communications and basically, uh, well, anyone who's still sort of on them, please, uh, this is not an attack. Uh, we're trying to push the ship away so it doesn't blow up. My little light is going to start rebooting, rebooting Viator. Okay. Oh. He's trying to get a, a boot up. You uh, hear something over your comm line. Comrade Decepticon, you are attacking A-Track at moment of weakness. You will not survive. That's gung-ho. One of um, the cons. Oh, okay. It's like... One of... What's his name? Master Blaster? Oh. Your guy? Yeah. What's his name? Uh, is it Mega Blaster? Mega Blaster? Yeah, his mini-con. Gung-ho. <laughs> uh, yeah, this... Uh, uh, no, we're trying to push the thing out of the way. You should sense us. I sense deception from a Decepticon vessel, comrade. Yes. This is trickery. But it's trickery from a breaker manifesting as a Decepticon. Snap. You'll notice we haven't fired any weapons. <laughs> I'm gonna use uh, speak Speaking nonsense. Yeah, talk nonsense. Sure, sure, sure. Gunpo will drink the energon from your spark chamber. You're right. Meet me on the docking bay so that you can you can fight, and we will battle in a in a manly fashion to the death. Okay, roll. Uh, that would be a seven. Is that, is that good? What does that happen? Tell me what happens. I think that is like the sliver of a success. Yeah, it's the, the minor success. So on the, the the success, but a success nonetheless. 
It's not mine, uh, it's just a normal success. They just get way crazier if you the higher you get. Speak softly, wisdom. Ah! Talk sense. So oh, there we go. This is the one that is. Uh, they will do with their best, but. To the best of their ability. But I owe them a favor. So I think it makes sense that at some point they're going to cash out on me when they realize that this whole thing was. You have to do something for them. Yeah. Yeah, you deprived him of his sweet, sweet victory. He's such a small bot. Killing all of you would get him a lot of cred on the Autobot <laughs> shit. It's like, you killed all those Decepticons? With my own two g grapplers. <laughs> Alright, he'll stand down while you're driving the ship up. Out of orbit. Yep. Good those course. he's are working. It's like Metro the, mo the old movie Metropolis down there. They're like pumping bellows and like hitting switches and like there's things everywhere they're doing. Welcome to all the Catania. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly like that. It's a Cybertronian engine room. Don't, uh... Don't put your arm anywhere you don't... You don't it shouldn't be. Don't worry, we were made for this. They weren't. <laughs> <laughs> like a can opener comes in and just can opens one of them. All CPU and processors come out like, ra like ravioli. Alright, so, uh... Hyatter's online. What are you doing while he's preventing the ship from being shot to shit by your gunship? Well, is that everything handled, really? Uh... <laughs> you get up. There's, like... Everything is, like, flashing. There's alert sirens going off everywhere. The ships are completely dark. The one ship that we're in is about to ram our ship. You know, down on the planet, there's, like, lights flickering on and off. And you just kind of put your hands on your hips <laughs> and go, Well, this looks handled. I feel like <laughs> this situation is optimal. <laughs> Well, uh, I guess let's start tracking Dev Char so he doesn't like you know disappear. In ooh, the ocean. fun story! Uh, you threw him through a hole in the window. Yeah. So because the ship's still blowing up, the atmosphere's getting in. Hard cuts from the weather for everyone. Protection. Protection. This is a location thing, yeah. right? It's, yeah, I understand. Oh. <laughs> Alright, I'm happy with that. Perfect. I have the Overlord's weakness. Yeah, you're good. Alright. Perfect. Alright, you're good. Uh, Alright, what are you doing now, Pete? What are you doing, Viator? I guess I should be starting to track the depth chart so he doesn't disappear into the ocean. This planet's mostly ocean, because it's a planet. <sighs> I guess I'll have to fly off to get him. Alright, goodbye! <laughs> <laughs> so we don't lose him. Uh, I'm gonna push myself up and make a lot of complaints about. And then the jolt is ran into the eight track. <laughs> yeah, fall back down to the to the ground. Pterosaur, a pterosaur will doom and destroy the Autobots. Grr! Tactical profile matches expected record. <laughs> yeah, the entire response pterosaur gets from the ship is the ship telling what he expects him to be that fucking stupid. <laughs> Different, interesting ways. I'm gonna check on Waspinator. Waspinator's there. He's he's doing okay. Okay. Waspinator used to be in ships that go down. Well, we're not going down yet. Waspinator just saying, used to it. I can just take. It's not as bad. Why don't you uh, lend a hand here? Uh, let's see what you can do with the ship's computer. <laughs> User rejected. <laughs> Self-destruct. <laughs> so, um... Teletran terminal spooled up. <clears throat> What's the All situation? Right. Uh, well, apparently I am Pterosaur right now. Uh, because I've got that stuff, that funky little IFF. Uh, Teletran seemed junk, but I remember we had the other AI, so I just rebooted that thing. Uh, we're pushing away the other ship. Man, is Skywing gonna kill me? Quick thinking. Uh, I threw out what's uh, I threw a depth charge out the thing because I figured he'd be the one wake up first because Lord knows what kind of up, uh, updates he had on. Suppose that's for the best. Still would have liked to see him bring to justice. Uh, yeah, I think Viator uh, took off after him. Uh, I'm a little busy holding the ship in, in one piece. Where are my no seats? Uh, well, Screamo popped up and did some stuff, and then they ran off. I better sense. go supervise that. <laughs> oh, it was rhinoceros. Oh. oh. <laughs> mm. yeah. 
We get down to the bedroom. Room. We put holes in teeth. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing it. We got the rhinoceros signal. Good, good. You know what they doing? Coordinate them. Make sure everything in the engine room is going well. You have to go by the cell block. Okay. Yeah, so it's like, hey, did you get that doomsday message? Yeah. Or was that just me? Yeah, I got it. That's uh, that's messed up, right? It seems Pretty like we should put aside our differences and work together as one united Cybertron people. Certainly seems like that. <laughs> you're just, you're just, you're I'm just gonna go right on by. Brainiac cell is empty. Interesting. Computer. Locate organic life form. No organic life. Organic life forms present several hundred thousand miles beneath the ship currently. Hmm. You know, the planet. I have to worry about that later. All right, so you're gonna head to the engine room. You'll be able to easily help the NOCs uh, because with your leadership and inspiring, they can do anything because you have that move. You're piloting the ship. You're looking for depth charge. Give me a look closely. Let's see if you can catch him before he disappears into the ocean forever. Oh, uh, six, His seven. natural habitat. <laughs> look closely. An ocean that literally melts your flesh. <laughs> I rolled seven. All right, what do you got? So mm -hmm. ask the questions and find one of them the hard way. What are you asking me? Uh, let's see. So I guess tell me about that trouble that they're doing. What will they do next? What will happen if I help Death Charge out of this? And is there something hidden out of, out of place? If so, what looks suspicious? Okay. Um, if you help Death Charge be brought into custody. Nothing will happen. He'll, he'll still plot to kill Rampage in the most disruptive way possible. Okay. Um, what was the other two questions? What's in or out of place? And tell me about Death Charge. What are they doing? What will they do next? Oh, okay. So nothing's really out of place, but you can see the ship spiraling in orbit, getting closer and closer to one of the capital city's reactors. So the hard way, if this doesn't work, you're going to hit one of those energon reactors, and that is going to make a boom. <laughs> well, I hope you guys are on this, because you're heading towards one of the bigger reactors. Remember that big power station we saw earlier that we barely held together during that outbreak? Yeah, you're heading there. No pressure on anything. And what Depth Charge is likely to do is... Switch over to his water alt form and go to the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Because I remember what you guys were planning in Crew Expendable. Right? And starts low numbers, like, we'll go to the bottom of the ocean. Wait a hundred thousand years, this will all blow over. Yup. Ain't gonna happen, buddy. So, what are you seeing? The ship is heading towards the Energon? Like the, you are crashed into the other ship. You're trying to offset its entry velocity. And if you guys don't, like, you have one more challenge basically you have to overcome you will hit the main reactor for this planet and set off an energon explosion and remember they're pumping live energon under a lot of this planet <laughs> it'll be one of those death star chain reaction deals because <sighs> the dark side's big but it's not big enough to lift the eight track the eight track is massive hey i got this <laughs> take everyone and get to the other ship What are you going to do? Initiate the self-destruct. I'm, I'm failing to see how that helps us. Good. It'll blow the ship off, of course. It'll blow... Yeah. The, the ship's engines aren't powerful enough to, to push back. Okay. Back. He's doing it. He's Alternate plan. You reroute all systems power to the engines. I get the no season to high gear. We control the thrust. Do one big burn and push ourselves away instead of you blowing the ship up. Yeah, okay, that'll work too. Yeah. The challenge with that is you're spiraling. Okay. So, so trying you... to like get velocity might just trap you deeper in the spiral as you crash. Okay. Because so, gyroscopics. Uh, oh. What do I want to do? Hold them back? What would be... Overcome? Uh, it seems like this is a set piece of some sort, and you've already gotten through like the first two parts of it. Like, oh god, you're all knocked out and you're free-falling. All right, now what about? Gotten... Probably if I were grace. to do like just like roll either sense or wisdom to 
guide him and pick the perfect point to uh, initiate the escape velocity. And then he would use courage to get it at the right moment. There is no hope here, so just keep that in mind. But, but, uh, yeah, that, you're, you're going to try and calculate an escape velocity, basically, to push the ship away from places, maybe towards an ocean. Uh, yeah, hopefully into space. Not likely at this point. Not an option? Okay. The, the dark side's engines aren't strong enough. Into the ocean, then. Okay. Okay, so yeah, do your magic together, guys. This is it. This is your chance. Everything's coming to this moment for you. Uh, this happens back to again our intergalactic, you know, Celtic. Now, what specifically is the rule that's preventing us from having hope? Uh, this set piece. The entire yeah, set like, piece. What, is, what does it say? Uh, you cannot have hope here. Okay. Hmm. Right? Let's roll it. Okay, well, we nailed the calculations. All right, so what'd you get on that roll? Uh, I got 13. And that's to give him courage or whatever? It's to, it's to aim the ship, and then his he's using courage to hit that moment. All right, here you go, Jack and Luck. You get all the... You guys manually, like, by you two together, do the math for it, for escape velocity, you know, rocket ship astrophysics, and then you got to pilot it out of here. Can we trust in, in Jack and Luck's luck? Uh, I've got an eight. It's not bad. That's exactly what you needed. So yeah, you punch the ship uh, out through that kind of escape vector and get it out of the death spiral it's in. And yeah, you're able to go off course and you crash into landfill. Good to mark. Yeah, the dark side's going to get scrapped and the eight track's going to take three damage. I think it'll be, you know, fixing everything, I guess. Because, like, the A-Track just rolls over the dark side, ripping it apart. Well, I hope Pterosaurus doesn't, you know, get sc scraped the thing, or... Oh, I'm sure his cell's open now. Yeah, he'll probably escape. I'm free! Remember, we were gonna work together. <laughs> uh, I, he's, you know what? He's pretty good at working together as a team. He's a combiner. Yeah. Okay, just in case you guys forgot about that part of the toy line. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you guys inevitably go offline again, because crashing... Mm -hmm. yeah, your teletrans systems boot back up. Your, your, the HUDs you have installed, because you have like cyberdecks that give you an actual HUD start. Spooling through, connections are set back up, and yeah... Uh, it's a wasteland of shredded, uh, twisted Cybertronian spaceship. Gold metal. Yeah. Like, there's Energon fires everywhere, there's embedded pieces of, like, burning metal that's still hot, because Cybertronian metal stays hot for a long time. <laughs> Years. <laughs> right, so, Jackamup is lying on the ground. He's, uh, got a huge, uh, like, 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 Spike. Piece of like spike through him is I am an, I am a leaf on the wind. Watch me soar. <laughs> this is not fatal at all, but man, does it hurt? Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> One of the escape pods in a crash harness gently lands beside you. Mm -hmm. Rocketta and uh, Ecto three walk out. Nice. Weren't they on me? Oh, they ran off you like as soon as this was going down. Ran to an escape pod. Oh, smart. You guys are clever. That's why I like keeping you around. Comrade. I'm gonna give you a little salute. That escape pod was big enough for, like, you and another guy. <laughs> <laughs> you were busy. Yeah. <laughs> you were busy at the time. I don't hold it against them. They're not doing the whole, oh no, we should all stick to you. Oh yeah, you guys got it! <laughs> Good luck! <laughs> Boink. We don't all have to go down the ship. We're useless here. Right? Well, why do we all have to go down? That's crazy. Someone has to, you know, give you all a funeral. And they expect one of us in the wreckage, comrade. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Where's Waspinator? <laughs> <laughs> Waspinator? Uh, he's over there. And there. And there. And there. And there. 
I start picking up the pieces. Flossbear's head starts talking to you. Ospinator feels light on his servos. Yeah, you took a big hit there. <coughs> uh, don't worry, we'll get you back in a stasis chamber. You'll be peachy in no time. Mossbear doesn't really have anything to say to that because that's what everyone tells him after he <laughs> explodes. It'll just put you in the you know, C chamber. CR there. chamber. CR chamber. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, I know. I wasn't correct. I was just giving you the words. Just tossing all the pieces, stir them up like soup, and eventually it will recombine itself. Yeah. <laughs> like it happened all the time for Waspinator's prodigy or descendant, Waspinator. The Predacon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that message. What of it? Well, suddenly we got, uh, bigger problems on our plate. So, out of character, just before you dive into the scene, the intent of me giving you the update from Season 1 wasn't to be like, you guys have to go and fight the Reapers! Mass yeah. Effect! It's just to A, link up the two seasons, establish that you are now beyond Season 1's timeline, and just let stuff from Season 1 show up. So if we keep going, you know, Nitro Zeus or whatever can be here. Well, I think there's... Not a... to derail the game to you guys having to go on a fucking quest. Okay. Well, I think there's only one thing to do. Wipe the, the coordinates from Cybertron from all of our data banks. Delete. <laughs> and now, everything's safe. The only way to be sure. <clears throat> Delete. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're on a beach, basically. It's part of the eight tracks on, like, the beachfront, like, sinking into the water a bit. Not, like, you know, countdown. It's just... It's a wreckage scene that would look really good in a movie. Except it was a bad movie. We take this, you know, dagger and line it up. A battleship. <laughs> oh, yeah, it looks kind of cool, like, uh, like in the new Star Wars with the Death Star wreckage. Yep. That was neat. Yep. So, that was a thing. Yeah. Well, let's start putting it back together. Oh. It's diecast, <laughs> so it's not that hard. Time for the long grass to just up up that, you know, response level to like 10. And just leave. Get out. <laughs> Uh, oh shit, yeah, you threatened people to destroy them with nuclear hellfire. That raised it a level. Hellfire. But don't worry, Devon. We we pacified yeah. the boss. <laughs> Just kidding. No, you didn't take him out. So this all... If you take the, the boss... Oh, no, wait. I was saying the boss was technically the plague. So technically this should reset to zero. But it's not. Whatever. Because fuck you guys. Doesn't matter. <laughs> You're at level nine, which means I get to add a new boss to this location if I so see fit. And at level ten, everyone's a threat to the world to you. Pterosaur! Yeah, Pterosaur is good. <laughs> no, oh shit! It's called Invaders. Add new boss to this location from a different location. Brainiac! That's not our problem anymore. That's yeah. someone else's issue. We're putting the ship together and then we're getting the heck out of here. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, I put your long rest at a community that you've made fellowship with. Yes. Well, Ooh, that's what community do we How about, look, look, look. Ship together. Uh, I don't know if you got any plans. We could always go to, uh, we're not that far from, uh, from the mass hole. We can go, uh, go visit, go visit, go visit the city, pick up some dogs. From the mass hole? Yeah. It's a big black hole with a bunch of ships around it. Flotsam City. Is that a thing I made up? No, it's, it's the thing me. you're making up? Yeah. Okay. I just Where the gotta, disaffected live. You gotta... Say, command I can't, I can't, roar. Yeah, I, I can't remember any of the things I've said in these games, alright? You gotta tell me that that's you doing a thing. Yeah, I'm okay with it. It's fun. I'm just commanding war. That's that's excellent. Um, but yeah, you can totally stay here. Just don't do anything to raise the danger level to ten. I mean, us staying here raises the danger level. No, it doesn't. doesn't, like, take you have to You have to do stuff like fuck with the wildlife, fuck with people, disrespect the boss, which was the plague. Yeah. So in other words, us having us around. Let's take a long rest. Yeah. Finally. Yes. So what the fellowship did you earn from this community? Yeah, you do get fellowship with this planet. Uh, uh. I'll throw that in the Discord chat. But uh, yeah, you guys are standing on the wreckage, you know. You've accomplished so much on this world in so little time. You cured their plague, you found new friends, you saved someone from dying of the plague. We fixed the overpopulation problem. <laughs> 
Yeah, Thanos, you did do that. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody goes hungry again. And that guy would be so baller for you guys to fight. Like, I'm inevitable. You'd be like, you're not that threatening, actually, because you're made of meat. Nanites? What? The, we call those red blood cells. They're, they're not that threatening. Oh, cute. You've got some magical stones. Well... You have magic? Alright, bring in our wizard, because we have wizards. <laughs> you do. There are cyber, There is Cybertronian sorcery. With a little spark of the Godmaker here. Get the fuck out of here, Tony. <laughs> I'm Dr. Steven. Get the fuck out of here, Tony. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, there's not really a celebration, because this world is on the brink. Yeah, it's, got, it's got to roll some shit back so it doesn't fall apart. I think we're going to wrap around here and figure the logistics out in the meantime. For but uh, you saved this planet from literal, like, annihilation. Like, they, everyone and everything would have died on this planet. It would have been a death ball. Yay. Like you, Hooray for us! You, you saved this world and you stopped, uh, fucking, what's his name, death charge from causing a big problem. If Do you understand how bad it would have been if Rampage got infected? Yeah. Yeah. How would you have cured Rampage? And cure. Because, <laughs> like, the cure has to actually cure you, and Rampage can't be killed, so the plague would be killing him, technically, but he's a sadist and a masochist. He doesn't care about the pain of the plague hurting him. There would have been no way to cure him. Hmm. He would have just gone planet to planet, burning them down to the ground by proximity. <laughs> Until he eventually, like, he would have to eventually cobble together enough technology that wasn't rotting to make an escape vehicle to get into orbit and then to, like, go into beast mode and kind of, like... Oh, yeah, we're putting up a... Swim his way! We're definitely putting up a notice to the uh, Star League and his Cybertron that Death Charge is completely freaking Looney Tunes. Well, a war criminal, as yeah. per your Alcanor prison records. How about we also tell them about, you know, the spawn of Unicron invading the universe? Tell them all about it. Spread that info around. Yeah, maybe you don't want to do that. Eh. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Okay, so I guess we're up in. I think we'll wrap there. Was that good for you guys? Yeah, yeah that's solid. Good. Well, that was our five-parter, The Path of Logic. I was Devin. Tyler. Peter. Mark. And this is sponsored by Nobody. Signing off. <laughs>